All right, greetings everybody and welcome to the data review for the new version of Shadowlinks. And today we're going to be starting off a little differently because this marks a pretty monumental thing for JP Wotive. And I say that because JP Wotive really hasn't done too terribly much with the shop. This isn't unusual for Globalers because I do believe Global has done this a few times with either vision cards or characters. Again, uh, I'm missing probably some data here, so I'm just going to claim that it's true. And if not, the comments will correct me. Commenters are really good. But here you go. Uh, so this is a bundle on the JP side. It's available for roughly about 14 days. And for 6k paid Lapis, you just get the new version of Shadowlinks. There's nothing uh, fine printy about it. For 6k paid Lapis, you also get 200 of her character shards to start you off quite well. You get 400 UR scrolls. You get 600 of both of the Awakening materials. So it's a pretty big package. And if you think about it, for people who are curious, it's about 100 US dollars, which, yeah, um, for a lot of, like, free to players, that's insane. For most people, that's insane. But if you think about, like, what most whales are spending on characters uh, to get everyone and have them maxed and everything, this isn't too terribly bad of a deal. JP also, like, normally runs when it comes to these characters, uh, not here, where I, I think this is the one I want. Like, for instance, this. Now, this is only 40 shards and not too terribly much in the way of Awakening. It's a pretty bad deal, but, I mean, it does kind of highlight that you are getting more value off of this pack. Uh, you're getting quite a bit bundled in there, so I, while it is like a 6k aid, uh, I would say that the character is roughly about maybe about 4,000 paid lapis in true value. And that's kind of interesting because AP hasn't really put prices on what characters are actually evaluated at. And this new version of Shadow Links, she is a 70 cost for another story. And if you look at another story's history as well, most of these characters are 100 costs, and so today, when we are evaluating this character and evaluating her in the future, this is important to remember to look at. She is a festival character, essentially, that she is from another story, like Thunder Astrius. She is on a paid bundle, which means that you don't have to necessarily try on her banner. You can, and still get her off of there, but this is potentially more appealing to a lot of people, depending on if you're a whale or not. Or, hell, even a mid-tier spender if you save up for this. And so, also being a 70 cost, while that is incredibly valuable for limited event stuff, that we do have to ask the question here of whether or not this character is as good or, like, as maybe a 90 cost character or whatnot. So to start this video to give you a little bit of extra entertainment and because I just enjoy the water element, here you go. Here's a free poll just for funsies because Umbra's crazy. And it's looking pretty bad. <laughs> oh well, it's, 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 it's entertainment value, right? Ooh, ooh, it's really bad. All right, so today, yeah, we're going to be looking at Shadow Lynx's uh, kit, her equipment, and everything that in specific numbers. At a future point, okay, we're dead. Uh, we will take a look at this character. Oh, it was a UR at the end. It, it could have potentially turned out better. That's very rare that you see uh, blue at the end turn out into a rainbow. All right, skipping ahead. Uh, let's go into here, show off her limit burst, which is interestingly, like she's a crystal archer, makes me wonder if at one point in development she was a light based character or a maybe a ice based character since ice and range work usually pretty well together. But here we are just taking, oh, you know, we're going to look at her as a water type character. 
So let me get her into a water-based party, which will be, you know, inflated stats a bit, but hey, we want to see her at her best. And really quickly, showing off a level 112 new version of old. Uh, Glassy, who is the tank in this party. And why not? Green, who is a 140. You can get an idea for generally what the stats are. I also do really quickly want to show off uh, Preen's resistances in this party to show that, yes, water is running overall a net positive in this group for elemental resistances. All right, so here are the stats. We'll go into talking about it in a second. Let's break into equipment first. So first off, uh, we have the new bow. This new bow is overall a 172 attack for the attack version. It also has a critical version. For this one specific character, missile attack up by 15, critical damage of 15, initial AP of 15, which is all very, very good. We also have defense penetration up by 20 in general for self. So overall, a very offensively focused bow and quite frankly, pretty damn good. As you can see, pretty good vision cards and uh, espers as well, which is contributing to speed. But the next thing I want to bring attention to is the trust mastery, because the trust mastery is pretty cool uh, on this character. So what it is, is 288 HP, 10 defense, 10, well, sorry, 12 critical. And this effect, increased slash resistance of 25% for three turns for allies, nothing really special there. Grants the following effect hit for self. When a hit is scored, uh, slash penetration for three turns of 30. Uh, which is very, very curious about how this works. So the way it reads is essentially if you get a hit on an opponent, your slash attacks get essentially powered up, which is pretty crazy. I mean, you think about a ranged character firing this off and getting the opponents down first before your sword characters end up going in there. That's a really good trust mastery. It's even good on other characters too. So yeah, I want to put this in as a trust mastery that seems pretty cool. It also has two casts at 24 TP, so it's terrible by any means. HP is generally good for a ranged character. 111 for speed is pretty fast. Accuracy is up to 79, which is pretty good in this party as well. And then we have just good single target resistance here, as well as good AOE resistance. And looking comparatively, he's generally net positive here. Uh, taking a look at the data, her initial resistances are negative towards strike and neutral towards shooting, which isn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Overall, she generally looks pretty decent upon first appearance for Thrust Mastery equipment that's coming with her and overall stats in a nice water party. So now let's get into some nitty gritty. Says it's not limited, but she is tied to another story character. So, uh, yeah, and what? And she's also on the another story banner. So, unless I'm terribly mistaken about this, which I'll correct in the video, she's limited. Seventy cost, three move, two jump, ranger, as well as uh, Grifford's uh, job for her subs. Uh, we already covered her TMR, master ability, missile attack, resistance, penetration by fifteen. HP by 5%, Dream Ability AoE up by 15, and Reaction Block of 30. Not bad overall, think quite nice. Now taking a look at her support skills, here's what's really important, her two main ones. Because what we're getting here is one of them is an Agility Increase Reaction Block of 35, which if you're keeping track at home, up to 65 already, which is very high. Decrease Movement for herself by one, which is something that made Alaya quite powerful, and I think this will make her quite powerful, in combination with her other one, which gives her defense penetration by 40, and range plus 2. Basically, the Alaya package that was at 100 cost before has now moved down to a 70 cost, and is quite nice. You can also run Grifford for attack and AP consumption uh, bonuses, 
or potentially running for HP and cha elemental chain resistance if you wanted more defensive, and range and accuracy or skill activation time down is all pretty good. As for a counter, the only thing that's really noteworthy here is Hunter's ability. Chance to counter all damage with E physical or magical evade. Enough said, it's really, really good still. Unless you're in reaction block, but then all counters kind of suck anyway. All right, uh, scrolling all the way down, we do have here uh, the Grifford's job. And other than basically this, which gives strike resistance, elemental chain resistance, and defense, this is the one ability that really matters to me. Uh, reduce it. Basically, she can have a physical damage barrier of 7,500 HP, which is very good on top of how much HP she already has. And it gives her extra attack and agility, which just makes her overall a better range character. As for Ranger, it has poison. It has 100% hit chance, which isn't, you know, always great because a lot of characters, dodge characters essentially can ignore this, but it's still good to have access in her kit in case they don't. Last, decreasing single target resistance is potentially also very strong, but given the casting time on this, I think Grifford's job just for the defensive and offensive boost alone, this one ability is potentially what you want to run. And what you're giving up is just two damaging abilities that are multi-hits, which are great for chaining missions, but not too terribly much else. You'll also note that her new abilities do not have casting time on them, which is very, very good. Unless I'm missing one of the symbols, but nope. Uh, just no casting time, which is very good. But it's giving up slow and the multi-hit to potentially just get that kind of barrier going is really good. As for her main job, if she kills an opponent, he can actually get a little bit of AP regeneration, which really cool uh next up increase water attack for herself increase uh physical and magical base distance based resistance so basically it's that uh squall style ability which in general to me works kind of a little bit better here because if they're hitting from a range because this character is pretty far might end up saving her a little bit of extra damage nope Pretty nice. Uh, all right, next up, Dispel Ignore Fatal Damage to Target. That's really good. And it also has 100% hit chance. Great with a nice mod. Uh, next up is an ability that gets upgraded twice. So here we have Increased Single Target Resistance. It's a large AoE, so a big bonus for everyone in pretty easy to cast. Upgrades Critical Damage, and that's at the end of the turn, which is pretty nice because it means that it will activate for a bit longer at four turns. Grants the following effect, decrease Chain Resistance by 30, which I don't know if I'm super crazy about, but sure, cool. And restores 15 AP. So, all right, this ability, which is her, we um, her AoE hit. So this one, we get the Enhanced shape of it from before so it's a little bit better of an aoe 200 mod restores an ap when performing a critical hit is not actually capped either and seals the debuff effect so basically if this ability hits an opponent they cannot use debuffs on your team which is really good for summer glassy as well as you know any tank out there that just doesn't want to get debuffed and makes it harder for them to get through can't debuff your opponent well unfortunately your stuff's gonna suck compared to mine which is great last ability job level 25 collect two targets 165 mod but you're dispelling all buffs haste for the target physical damage buffs magical damage buffs uh you're nullifying physical damage for three turns and uh magic damage for four turns for the or three turns, sorry, for the target, and nullifying haste for the target. So you're basically dispelling almost essentially everything on this character. So nullifying damage increases, haste, reducing enhancement rate for three turns. So if your opponent essentially tries to make themselves stronger, uh, it's not as effective as it previously was. And, you know, just removing all enhancements in general is pretty cool. 
overall, I have to say that I like this character. I think that she is a strong addition, especially at limited cost to 70 cost is not too terribly much for how much this is. And it goes a long way to protecting tanks, uh, providing, you know, more support for other characters. And she's pretty durable with, you know, HP barriers, a uh, honeycomb style effect, which is keeping her safe at more distances. She also has a strong counter ability to get through. And she has something that made Alaya generally like really, really great. I think her water and ice combinations, whether you're running her just on, you know, with current water or ice characters is just really, really good. I don't know. I particularly quite like this. I'm not going to go so far to say that she is going to be like a star, an overall star or uh, like non-limited time events, like kind of need to see her performance to really go there. But overall, if you were like in the market for a new 70 cost character that was looking generally pretty strong with a lot of utility based thing or utility in her kit and whatnot i'd say that like for a 70 cost this is generally quite a good character and maybe even just to say is a pretty good deal to get this character right now of course your mileage may vary it may depend on whether or not you want to run her or even if you're even like a water player and ice player, uh, like in combination, even with someone like A2, for example, is one that I would be potentially interested in because A2 is generally interested in any character that can uh, uses a HP barrier. This means that he can effectively get buffed by A2, attack the opponent, seal barrier destruction, and then, you know, barriers just on her and some other characters just keep going and can be cancelled out and that's just crazy good yeah uh, i'm i'm on the side that i like this character and with from all that i've seen in data but in terms of testing and against the current meta well that's what we're going to absorb over the next few days and come back with an initial judgment so i know i kind of gave a little bit of an initial judgment but i haven't put my foot down yet so yeah but let me know uh, at the end of this video, after such a long time of talking, let me know what you think about her kit, what you also think about the idea of selling this character in such a bundle. Do you think it's too expensive? Do you think it's not expensive enough? No one's going to say that. But do you think it's fair, I guess, uh, for what you're essentially getting? Or uh, let me put it a better way, reasonable. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you later.